And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Trapper Jack, Hall of Fame broadcaster, podcaster, YouTube content creator, and family-friendly morning radio host for over 30 years. Today, we're going to discuss how people experience God through visions, angels, God incidents, NDEs, messages from heaven, and more. Trapper, thank you so much for being my guest today. I really appreciate you and welcome. Ah, uh, this is great being with And how do you get a normal name like Jeff, asked Trapper? <laughs> People ask me, how do you get a name like Trapper? Because all the good names were taken. That, that's what it was. So mm. just so you know, just so you know. Well, Trapper, if you don't mind, I would like to learn a little about you first. Can you tell us what set you on your path of spirituality? Absolutely. Grew up Catholic, uh, walked away for about 30 years because God was vague, distant, uh, out there somewhere wasn't talking to me. And what brought me back was this sudden realization, as you have realized in in your interviews, is that something else is going on out there. And I was bumping into miracles and people who had encounter stories. And it the whole process seduced me. And then pretty soon I'm having my own experiences. So um, yeah, he came knocking, basically. He came knocking. And uh, the, the story that just popped in my head that that kind of solidified things for me was it was in December of 2003, and I'm, I'm a blind guy, and, um, and I did a radio show. I was on the radio for about 40 years, and this one particular morning, I got up at 2.30 in the morning to do the radio show, and I woke up, and I'm getting up, and I realized my wife obviously has left the light on the room because the light's, you know, light's on, and I look up, and we had a ceiling light, and it wasn't on, and I got a lamp over here, and it's not on, and I, there's a lamp over there, and it's not on. I'm looking out the window. It's pitch black, and it's like, what, what, you know? And the whole room is illuminated. And then I, uh, then I realized that I could see perfectly. I mean, absolutely wow. perfect. And I wasn't asleep. I mean, I'm awake. Like now. I, I was awake. And I'm, and I'm looking around. I realized all my vision issues were retinitis pigmentosa. It's a retinal degeneration thing. Uh, you look real murky, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I, but I was looking around the room. And I could see like the, the grain of the wood in the, in the chest drawers. And I could see the little area rug I had over there and it was there was some red in there and the drapes and the ceiling fan. I, I can see everything absolutely perfectly. The room is illuminated, lasted about one minute and then everything went dark again. And I'm going, what was that? That would be um, a conversation is what I call it. Those are conversation God gives us. He shoots off the flare gun to kind of give us, you know, get our attention. And he was getting uh, my attention saying, I'm here. The light of the world is here, if you will. Um, and whether the light's on or off, I'm here. Whether you can see or not, I'm here. Whether I heal you or not, I'm here. Uh, so that was one of those conversations. And I've had a bunch of those conversations. And now I've done hundreds of interviews with people who have had encounters with angels and divine intervention and visions and prophetic dreams. And your death experience, of course, as, as you know, Jeff, is, is huge. And so I've just, and they keep coming. As you know, they just keep coming. I went on with my podcast three, almost four years ago. I knew I had one good story. I knew I had one good story. And the question was, would anyone else, would I have a big enough audience with people who had enough experiences to keep the thing going? This is about four years ago. I've never gone looking for any any stories. They've come looking for me. So I said to my wife, here's what I want to do. You know, I've talked to enough people with, you know, angel stories and miracles happen, healing miracles. I said, "I, I, I think, this would be kind of a cool thing just to see God's hand, if you will, you know, uh, collisions of heaven and earth. I think that'd be a cool weekly podcast. And she said, that's a great idea. You should pray about it. And I decided I got to do something more powerful than prayer. And I said, Alexa, (laughs) I said, Alexa, what's today's Bible verse? I don't even know if Alexa can do this anymore, but I said, Alexa, what's today's Bible verse? And she quoted something in Proverbs, commit to the Lord in whatever you do and he will establish your plans. I went, okay. So my first story was a buddy of mine, a fellow podcaster, by the way, Jeff, by the name of uh, Dave Jackson, has the School of Podcasting. And I had recently heard him tell a story on his podcast of this particular incident. So I got, I got, him, I got him on my podcast to tell this thing. And this was my first story. And away we went. This, this is pure divine intervention. Back in college, early 90s, he's dropping off his, his girlfriend at her apartment, and he pulls into a parking slot, and there's a 
guy standing there, got a hood on and all this kind of stuff. And he's just kind of standing there and his girlfriend's about to get out of the car. And the guy standing next to his car says, get out of the car. And Dave says, no, I'm good. Thanks. Get out of the car. And he, Dave looks at his girlfriend and says, you're not getting out of the car. I'm not. We're getting out of here. And he does kind of a quick T and goes off. And he hears this, what sounds like a brick hitting glass. He, does, he doesn't know what he hears, but he's flying out of there. And she's saying, he's shooting at us. No, he's not shooting at us. And so he, he goes screaming. As he was, this is in Akron, Ohio. And he goes screaming down the road. And he pulls into a place he worked, this burger joint, because a lot of times police officers were there, and there was one there. And he pulls up and says, do you see anything on my car? There's this guy, and he was trying to take the car. And, and the officer said, wait, wait, r- roll up your window again. And he rolls up the window. Okay, roll it down. He says, look, and he says, look at, look at your window. And there was this black smudge. And he says, that's from a bullet. This guy was six feet away, fired a bullet. It hit his, I mean, this, that thin glass, side window glass of his car. And as he's driving, it's hitting his window, ricocheting, and then put a hole in the metal of the door. And he's just, he's going, that's not even fun. So Monday morning in class, he goes to his physics teacher and says, here's the scenario. This happened. Guy shooting, police officer says so. It's a bullet. It put a hole in, you know, the whole thing. Can you explain that as a physics teacher? And he goes, yeah, that's, that's easy, Dave. Somebody upstairs likes you. Yeah. <laughs> that was story number one. Mm. And from there, people started uh, contacting me and saying, I got something. I got an angel story. And so Maria, she's, she's uh, on the line. She's calling me from Georgia. And Maria's story was, in the 90s, before cell phones, she's driving down the road and her car is having electrical issues. She's hoping to make it home. And she's on this highway and she's just getting around the bend and her car is conking out at the worst possible place. And just kind of rolling around, pulls off the highway, off to this kind of this grass skirting or something. So, and, and her car's dead. And she's sitting there and cars are actually flying by her. And by the time they see her, they're past place to get off. So she's stuck on this highway. It's now getting dark and she's praying to God and she's out of the car and she's trying to flag people, but there's no place to stop and nobody sees her and they're flying at 60, 70 miles an hour and they're not seeing her. And she's, and she, she flashes on something. She was reading an angel book Talk about angels. And she says, okay, uh, okay, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray to my angel or some angel. And she said, angel, I need some help. I'm stuck here. She just stayed into the situation. I'm stuck here. No one can see me where I am. Electrical. I mean, her lights weren't even working on in the car. And, and I'm, I don't know what to do. And she finished the prayer and slowly around the corner comes this ugly yellowish green car of some sort slowly comes around and pulls up behind her car. And a guy wearing a white sweater, white pants, white shoes, white belt, White shirt, everything, all white, jumps out and says, do you need some help? And she's looking going, are you, are you kidding me right now? Yeah, I got some car issues. Okay, let me take it. And he pops the hood and goes, oh, it's your uh, framulator, your hydraulic suitinator valve, whatever it was, right? He says, I, I, uh, there's, a, there's a parts store about eight miles back. I don't think they're closed yet. Uh, hop in. So they're driving back, and she's looking at this guy, all in white. And she's looking. She just finished that prayer, and she goes, you're an angel. And he just smiles and he drives, comes back. He installs the part, everything good, good. And off he went. And it was like, ah. and these kinds of stories just keep coming and just keep coming and just keep coming. So whatever you want to go to, well, I, you want angels, you want divine interventions. What do you want? What do you feel like? I feel, you know, I've got hundreds of conversations in my head right now. I was checking out your website for your podcast yeah. and I, your podcast is called touched by heaven. Yeah. Touched by heaven. Everyday <clears throat> encounters with God. And the very first sentence said, God is not boring. And I thought that was so perfect because he was, he was so boring to me and he's not, he's, he's so dazzling. And you know what? May I say this as a guy who goes to church every, every week, Yes, you may. Uh, <laughs> God should not be boring in church. And sometimes it's the most boring place to find God. I'm sorry. But when you think about the early church, how it exploded with people, people were, were, were marching to martyrdom, willing to be martyred 
over i mean you, you they they you know when the, the early church the early masses if you will when they would they would have the liturgy and they would have the eucharist the communion and all that kind of stuff you get caught doing that you're dead you're in prison or you're dead and they still they still went and it's like what would make someone do that what would make someone risk their life you got to be out of your mind and still the church is they can't kill it off they're trying to kill the church and they can't kill the church why it can't just be because of good homilies, you know. They're sharing, they're sharing their faith. You, you look in Scripture. God's not boring. You got over 200 references to angels. You got miraculous healings. You got, you've got divine interventions all over the place. And now we look at today's world, and you, you're not hearing it. You're hearing it, you're hearing it out here, Jeff. Mm. You hear it in near-death experiences. You hear it on, on Touch by Heaven podcast. You hear these dazzling things God is doing, but there just doesn't seem to be a venue in most churches where someone can just go stand up there and say, this is what happened to me. And, uh, you know, we just had a story. Um, and this, 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 this divine intervention blows me away. And it's, and it's shocking to me how often, how many people have had this particular experience in their own way. And when they hear me talk about it on my podcast or if I'm a guest elsewhere, they'll go, Oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one. The most recent one was a guy, he's from Florida now. He was riding his motorcycle from Florida to, I think it was Dallas, to see his mom. And actually was going to drop his motorcycle off. Okay, he's on his motorcycle and he's in some small town in Texas. And he's going through this kind of, you know, one stoplight kind of town. And he's approaching an intersection about 40 miles an hour. Coming from the other direction, there's a, there's a car and right behind it is a semi-truck. And the car... Uh, it was kind of slowing down to turn right. So the semi is coming behind him and the right, and he's kind of, he's, and this guy in the motorcycle, he's got a, <clears throat> he's got a semi truck right here and he's right here. And they're both going to the intersection and the, and the semi truck pulls out to go around the, the car in front of him, puts him smack dab in the same lane as the motorcyclist who we obviously did not see when he was doing all this. And they're, they're as close as you and I are right now. You know what I mean? They're like right there. And he, he's instant, I'm dead. I'm dead. He just knows, I'm dead. And suddenly, he's riding his motorcycle, and he's on the other side. Hmm. And, he's, and he doesn't realize what just happened. He's just on his motorcycle. And it's like, and he's, and he's angry. He is ready now to do a 180, turn around, run down that guy in the semi to, to get after him for killing him. And he realizes he's not dead. He's alive. And he, he rides for about, and he can't, this is just mind boggling. He rides for about a mile or so and he, got, he, he has to pull off because he's, he's, he's not paying attention to his riding because what the heck just happened? And he pulls off at a, at a gas station. He kind of sits on a curb, grabs a beer and sips the beer for an hour going, what the heck was that? That was a conversation. And I want to kind of fast forward here because that happened a number of years ago. He happened to wake up this past Christmas morning as I was on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. He woke up, his angel woke him up in that moment where I am telling a similar story. He's waking up to basically his story, car version, and he's going, wait a minute. In other words, God is coming around, sending an angel to wake him up to say, hey, let's fly back. You need, to, you need to consider what happened here. You need to consider this divine intervention, you know, collisions, heaven, earth, all that kind of stuff. You need, you need to wake up because his spiritual life was maybe a little shaky. What he heard, I'll tell you the story that he was listening to, is a guy by the name of Mike Daigle who's got some amazing stories. But in his case, many years ago in Northern California, family was camping. They've got a trailer. Trailer breaks down. He takes his car to go for help. He's going to be on a road where he's got basically a mountain on one side and a lake on the other. I don't know if it was Shasta, uh, Shasta Lake or not where it was. But there was this one place at that time where it really went down to one lane. It was not a well-traveled road, obviously, but he had to be on that road. And he had been on that road before and even thought, what, what would you do if, it, if you have an oncoming? Well, that's what he got. He's driving and he's on this road. And suddenly from the other direction, here comes this pickup truck. He found out, he realized later that this was a drunk driver and this guy's just hauling. And he said a quick prayer. There's no room to move. He's got a mountain on one side and the lake on the other. And here they come and he says, says, Trapper, difficult to explain what happened. But he says, all of a sudden, everything went Casper the friendly ghost. In that, he says, 
you could see through my car, uh, through me. I could see the, the, the road below me. I'm watching this car as it's going through. So they're going through, and let's see, he's on the left. So the driver is like passing over, and literally the other driver is seeing his head as they go by each other. These two cars are passing through each other. They both stop afterwards. Mike gets out of his car, goes, <laughs> goes back, raps on the guy's window, and uh, says, yeah, roll down. The guy says, no. He said, yeah, I, just like me, man, I, you're, <laughs> we're both, we both just went through what we just went through. Not that I'm like you guy rolls down the window. This is when he realized the guy's pretty drunk. And, uh, he says, yeah, that really happened. And, and Mike says to him, this is just my hunch. This is my nudge. You probably got a wife, a couple of kids. And the guy says, yeah, he says, I think this is God's way of saying, stop drinking, stop drinking, or you're going to lose it all. And that was that. And he says, I, I, he wonders now, of course, what happened to that guy? I told him he's probably in another podcast telling the same story to somebody else. I don't know. <laughs> but I have talked to so many people who have had that. Th have you ever heard of that one, by the way, Jeff? Have you heard of this car through car? It's funny that you mentioned that. I just had a guy from the Monroe Institute. You know of the Monroe Institute? I'm not sure. This guy named Bob Monroe is kind of one of the pioneers of using binaural beats and listening to binaural beats makes people have out of body experiences and stuff. But gentleman I was speaking with was talking about sometimes people are able to go out of phase, which maybe in this story, God took the gut, these people out of phase. So they just passed right through each other and yeah. then they rematerialized or something. And well, that's, that's the closest whatever. I've got. Yeah. I, there was one that was kind of a divine intervention slash angel. You got a sense, uh, mm -hmm. a gal by the name of Jane, who's a friend of ours, uh, in her experience, about 20 years ago, she was driving home because uh, her dad was dying. She wanted to get there before he died, basically. And she's kind of out in a kind of a rural area, but highway, highway meets highway. And there's this one place where kind of like one lane gets on the other one lane and they kind of merge onto this highway. And she'd driven it a million times before, but she missed the fact there was a semi coming in this highway she's about to merge to. So she gets on the highway and, and suddenly she looks in the rearview mirror and it's like, it's on her. There's no question there's going to be an impact. And she's, she, she remembers thinking brace for impact because, you know, she's just getting on the highway 50, 55. Here comes Mr. 75, whatever he is. And she's just braces for impact. And again, nothing. And then suddenly the semi is in front of her and she's going, and she's going, what? And mm -hmm. she's shaky and she pulls off the side of the road as early as she can. And she's, and she's just shaking and going, what was that? And she heard three words call this her angel, not your time, mm. not wow. your time. Um, Do you feel that the, God is always reaching out to us subtly and it's just us? And to, sometimes loudly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I think now these are, are very pronounced cases, right? Very pronounced. But do I believe that he is sending out? Uh, yeah, I'll give you a simple one. A listener of ours, uh, George Hicks, great guy. Listen, where is he? He's uh, on the East Coast. Carolinas, Georgia, where is he? But anyway, he, um, he's driving down the road. This would be, this is this, these are the simple ones that we miss. Simple ones that we miss. He's driving down the road and he's mad at God. Buddy of his is sick. His marriage is this and everything. I mean, this, this, his buddy is, is going through hell on earth and he's, he's ticked at God that he's allowing it. And he's driving down the road and he's just going, God, God, life, life sucks. God, I just want you to know life sucks. And he turns the corner and there's this giant billboard that says life is what you make it. <laughs> now, I don't think that's coincidence. Call me crazy. And this to me is how God speaks to us on a daily basis. Sometimes, and this has been going on for several years for me, and this is God sending me messages, if you will, in a way that's so perfect for the, for the former radio host, music. If you ever get an earworm, pay attention to what the song is and then spiritualize the lyrics. I do this now, and it guides me when I give talks, in podcasts, um, just about anything I do, sometimes a song will, and it won't leave me alone. It's like, what is the song? And, I'll, I'll, and, I, and I don't know lyrics, despite the fact that I was on the radio. I don't know lyrics. I always have to look them up. And for example, there's, there's an example. This is one of the earlier ones. Phil Collins against all odds. Just kept playing and playing. Phil Collins against, like, what, what is this? So I looked at it. What is it? 
uh, boy loses girl, uh, turn around, look at me, see me cry, turn around, see where you used to be. And against all odds, I'm going to wait for you. That's the song, boy and girl, spiritualize the lyrics. Who is singing to whom? Jesus singing to his church. Where's everybody going? People are leaving the churches in droves. Where's everybody going? Turn around, see me cry, turn around, see where you used to be. And against all odds, I'm going to wait for you. And so you start looking at it like that, but at some point, at some point, he can't, you know, he can't wait any longer. And that doesn't just mean coming back to church. That's, that's not the point here. Coming back to him in whatever way, shape, form. You know, church is a place where we gather. He established the church upon this rock. I will build my church. Church is important to him. But that may not be your first stop. Your first stop may just be in acknowledging a moment like what a billboard says, what a song says. For me, the very <laughs> when I, I used to think something was a coincidence. This is God having a sense of humor on day one of my life. When I was born, uh, mom sent dad to get the birth announcement. Okay, so he goes to the store and I picture him going, oh, you, know, you got a million choices. Hey, this one. What does he come back with? He comes back with one where on the front of the card is a baby holding a microphone. Mm. And the words, a new voice is on the air. <laughs> you know? wow. Coincidence? No, that's just, that's just God announcing something. That's just God planting some seeds so later on I can go, oh, okay, now I get it, now I get it. So, um, so the answer to the question is, is he talking to us all the time? I think these messages are being, seeds are being thrown at us all the time. And most of the time, we're just so used to not looking for them that we're, we're oblivious that, we're, that, 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 they, that they're there. Do you believe that it's just that we're not looking for them or we don't? want to look for them like we're, we're not interested oh there's a lot of that you know i'm busy living my life and god is again and that was me i mean i when i left i you know i he was there you never know throw a prayer out usually the help variety you know sometimes here's a dramatic one for waking somebody up this is a guy who uh didn't care uh, i think he was catholic i think he was i think they both were um this guy let's see i think his name is chris thinking and Maria I think so anyway uh, Maria was over at the his house and he, they're watching Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune or something and she, he has a uh, an 11 year old son at this time she has a dog so she's got her dog there dog and the kid love each other so they're sitting the, the couple sitting down to watch Jeopardy and the boy and the dog are going upstairs and the dog is just yapping up a storm just barking like crazy. They're kind of like, what is that? So the response was just turn up the TV. They're turning up the TV, turning up the TV. Next to the TV was this six foot tall palm tree and a pot. Whole thing weighs about 150 pounds, been there for a million years. Okay. So it's just, it's there, palm tree stand. And they're watching and dog yapping, 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 louder, louder. It's like, what is it? Just turn up, turn up TV. Can't hear the darn TV because of all that dog barking. And then suddenly, uh, no, no rhyme, no reason. The palm tree goes 150 pound palm tree in a pot dirt flies everywhere and it's like so they stop watching jeopardy and they and they're down at where they, where they everything is like wait a minute that, that's impossible what just and then it, then dad there kind of goes and what's with that dog and he goes flying up to the bedroom where his son is committing suicide wow his 11 year old son had taken the belt from his bathrobe and tied it around his neck twice he's ending his life because something earlier in the day D devastated him and it's just it's for an 11 year old boy whatever and he's trying to kill himself and the dog was going crazy during this process as soon as the father opened the door the dog stopped barking he starts and it's, the kid's purple he's not breathing and he's getting this thing off of him they're about to call 911 but the boy suddenly starts breathing and the boy lived he's still alive today later that night couples in bed middle of the night, he just springs up and goes, an angel. It had to be an angel. That's divine intervention. My boy is dead if that palm tree doesn't fall over. Mm -hmm. Somebody knocked that palm tree over. An angel, God himself, somebody knocked that palm tree over. And that dog barked, and he just kind of put it all together. <laughs> and he says, where's that, cro where's that cross necklace you got me, Marie? <laughs> what? Where's that cross necklace you got me? Where is it? Well, it's over in the... She gets it, uh, and he, he doesn't take it off now. And he starts going to Mass every week. Mm -hmm. These are moments designed to wake us up. First comes encounter, then comes repentance, then comes mission. Then you realize life isn't just about, hey, let's just 
hang out here and have a good time until we're dead. There's something else that we're here for. And that woke him up that night and completely changed his life by saving his son's life to an angel. I think the problem is that science, and let me first say that science is great. Science has, has done a lot of amazing things and we owe a lot to science, but science or scientific people will immediately jump to, this is just coincidence. All this is nonsense. It's just coincidence. And that helps sow in the seeds of doubt for these religious and or spiritual experiences. And the church misses the fact that science is on our side. And I say this for this reason. And, and me as a Catholic, I'll tell you a what's considered a Catholic story, but it's not. It's out there for everybody. Using science. I, this, If you took away, Jeff, if you took away every miracle God ever did, and I had to hone it down to one miracle, this is it. Because it includes science. It's divine intervention. It's science. It's it's Jesus, it's Mary, it's, it's all of it. Here's, here's what it was. In 1531, uh, near Mexico City, Mary appears to a guy by the name of Juan Diego and says, I want a church built up here, go see the bishop, and, you know, bishop doesn't care. Yeah, right, yeah. Don't bother me, kid, go away. And, uh, <coughs> and so she does something. She, he's where he has what's called a tilma. It's basically a cloak made out of cactus. These things last 15, 20 years or so. They just fall apart. So in December, she, they're up on this hill with roses where roses don't go. They call Castilian roses, I think. But anyway, she, she picks these roses for him, puts them in his cloak and says, now go show this to the bishop. And so he goes to the bishop and he's got his roses. And okay. And he goes, sees the bishop and what, what, what now? And he unfurls his his tilma, his cloak, and out come these roses to kind of like, that's kind of surprising. Yeah, roses into December. But on the Im, uh, there's an image now on his cloak that wasn't there before. The image of a woman standing in front of the sun, standing atop the moon, uh, 12 stars around her, mimicking, if you will, Revelation chapter 12. John, the apostle John talking about, and there was this woman, this vision of this woman, a cloak by the sun, standing atop the moon, uh, 12 stars around her head and uh, pregnant, pregnant, ready to give birth to a male child. All this. It's like, it's like God did this copy paste onto the cloak of Juan Diego. Those who lived in that area, Aztec pagans, sacrificing their children, you know, to the gods to make them happy. When they saw the symbolism, I mean, there's flowers and colors and all this kind of symbolism. Here's what they came, they, here's the, here was the conclusion of what this image was, that she was from heaven, that she was the queen of heaven, that she was a virgin, but pregnant with God. It's the story of Christianity. It's the story of Mary, Jesus, and the whole thing. This is it right here. They saw it. They believed it. And 9 million Aztec pagans became Christian followers in about four years. It was that fast. It was, it was that fast. Now, that's a, that's a great story all by itself. Okay, now science. We go about 400 years in the future here. We are in the 1900s. So now science can really take a look at this cloak, this image of this woman and, and all that kind of stuff. What is it? What's the substance? that the, They don't know. They still don't know. It doesn't seem to be earthly. Temperature of the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Our Lady of Guadalupe. Have I mentioned it's Our Lady of Guadalupe? Our Lady of Guadalupe is 98.6 degrees. Hmm. The stars that she's standing in front of in this image are in the exact location the constellations were located on that day, December 12th of 1531, only not from Earth looking up, but from heaven looking back. It's reversed. Then they looked into her eyes. By the way, this is all documented. Look it up on, on YouTube. Wow. Just, just Google Our Lady of Guadalupe. They, sh they shine light into her eyes and they constricted like real eyes. Then they look microscopically down to her retinas, if you will, hidden for 400 years. In both eyes is the image of Juan Diego and the bishop and the, the cloak and the roses and 12 other people in the room that were looking on. And when people say there is no science in God, I just say Google Our Lady of Guadalupe or YouTube Our Lady of Guadalupe. It is an amazing, and I, I just scratched the surface of, of all the science that is that is in there and the symbolism. So, yeah, I'd say there's some science on our side. 
Wow. I've never heard that story before. It's I know. an amazing story. You, with the, you know what? I got to tell you something. I, I'm 190 years old and I have never, I have yet to be at a mass, personally be at a mass where that whole story was told. That's crazy to me. We, we don't have to come up with homilies and sermons. We just have to tell stories, which is what you hear too. I mean, Jeff, that's, isn't that what you do? It's, it's all storytelling. Mm -hmm. And when you have documented stories, and, and for a Catholic, I look at Eucharistic miracles, same way, at the consecration, bread and wine, okay, but there are these times in history, dozens of times, where something happens as a sign for us now, where the bread becomes something else, and they check it out in a lab, and it's always heart tissue. Anytime there's a Eucharistic miracle where the bread turns into something else, and every time they send it to an independent lab where they want atheists to be the, the scientists, they want atheists. They want atheists to say, we can't explain this, why this piece of bread turned into heart tissue, always left ventricle. That's the part of the, the heart that pumps blood that keeps you alive. Always type AB blood, always. And when this happens, always, 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 I think there's a message that, by golly, what the, what the church says, that that bread and wine actually become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Maybe that's really happening, you know. But again, I don't hear those stories at church. They just assume, well, I guess everybody knows these things. Not me, man. Th these are the things that brought me back. The, I, I needed to see the flare gun, you know. I needed to see the flare gun. Everyone's from Missouri, as far as I'm concerned. Show me, you know, show me. Yeah, <laughs> that's how, yeah. you know. You've done a lot of podcasts like I have, and you've probably heard a lot of people say that many people on the earth are unhappy, suffering. In your opinion, why do you think we come to earth, and why is there so much unhappiness on earth? Because it's a fallen world. Because Jesus spoke the truth when he said, the ruler of this world is the devil. Isn't that interesting? He didn't say, hi, everybody, I'm the ruler of the world. No, he, he gives, he gives, it's, the devil is the ruler of this world. It's a fallen world. When the angels fell and they fell to this level, uh, <clears throat> he runs the joint. We're in exile, basically. We're here to be a part of what Christ did 2,000 years ago. This is, this is my faith here, is that when he died for us and died for our sins and opened up the gates of heaven and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, it's funny, there's in the, what's called the transfiguration in the Bible, Moses and Jer uh, is Elijah appear to Jesus and to Peter and John and James. It's called transfiguration, but it's funny, in one of the Gospels, Moses says to Jesus, he looks, he's looking at this coming, the coming exodus of yours, Jesus. In other words, Moses led the Israelites to the promised land. You know, watch the parallels or Old Testament, New Testament. He's leading the Israelites to the promised land. And, uh, but he died before he got there. And then Joshua leads him into the promised land, land of milk and honey. Well, the parallel is that's heaven. So here's Jesus leading us to the promised land, heaven. Uh, he says, pick up your cross and follow me. That's what we're supposed to do. There is suffering. There is suffering in that process. And, and it's, it's hard to understand why there's so much suffering. If, a good God wouldn't allow fill in the blank. And that's what we kind of often will just kind of fall down to is a, a good God wouldn't allow, but he does allow. Why? He does some amazing things with the ugly in this world. He, he can take the ugly and turn it into something so awesomely good and, and transform us. But it's a hard, hard concept to understand how a good God allows. But the reason he, he allows this fair, amazingly fair platform, if you will. I, I consider this like a chessboard. We're on a chessboard. And you've got the influences, the good guys and the bad guys on us all the time. What are we going to do today? We're going to do good things or bad things. And there's a heavy influence on the negative, as there is on the positive, but the negative is a lot easier to do. And so they're trying to move the pawns. And, and which way do we want to go? And that's ultimately the every day's decision of which way we want to go and allowing that spiritual side of us to direct our physical side. That really is what, what we're supposed to be doing is allow the spiritual to direct the physical. Do you believe that there are demons on earth? Yeah. Jesus said so. I believe it. Yeah. Uh, I've had enough. Um, I, you've probably interviewed them as well. I've had people. It's interesting, especially when you talk about angels, we have to be so careful because some people do hear the voice of angels on a regular basis. 
Some people are confused. They think they're hearing the voice of angels and they're not, they're getting the other guys, mm. you know, there's there, but boy, they can, they can, I know it was an angel because, um, they knew something about uncle Bob when I was talking to the psychic and not to put down psychic, <laughs> but they knew something about uncle Bob that, uh, that psychic knew, uh, that uncle Bob had a mole on the back of his head. They used to flare up and look like the state of Arizona, you know, so and only, and only, you know, only, and you go, the bad guys know that stuff too. The bad guys know everything about us. So just because you hear somebody say something about something that only nobody knew that. So the say, that doesn't say a thing. <laughs> so you got to be careful on one episode of my podcast. I think it was called the other voice in one case was a woman who contacted me because she was hearing an angel kind of new to it. It got her to move from, I don't know what state down to Florida. I don't know where she, but, and, and because that's where she was supposed to be. And she started telling me this story about this angel and what his name was and saying some things that were just theologically so opposed and taking her far, far, far from away from the truth. And, uh, I said, hold on. I said, I said, let me, let me correct you on some things here because you don't know scripture real, real well. And they're quoting scripture and it ain't in there. And I said, um, by the way, and she was Catholic or used to be. And I said, you're not praying a rosary. You're not praying a rosary as much as you used to. Right. She goes, no, you're not going to church as much as you used to. Right. And I started listing all the things you, she probably wasn't doing as much anymore. Right. She goes, yeah. And I said, okay, here's what I want you to do. Cause I said, I, cause she's hearing a voice. I said, start praying your rosary because he hates that thing. Uh, start going back to mass, go to confession, take the Eucharist, do these things. And I almost guarantee you that voice is going to go away. So I called her a few weeks later. It was gone. On the same episode, I'm talking to a guy, I think his name was Michael. And he had had for 18 years, he has been in contact with Michael the Archangel and doing this and doing that. And I mean, chaotic. But now after 18 years, uh, there was nothing I was going to say. There's nothing I could say. I got his story and I believe what he heard, he heard, but it wasn't coming from the good guys. And so you got to be really careful with, with discerning the, the good guys from the bad guys because uh, they, they want you confused. Their whole thing is to break us up in chaos. So how do you discern between the two? I'll tell you, as a Christian, it's either taking you to Jesus or away from him. It's either taking you to Jesus or away from him. Some an angelic stuff that I've heard, they get, you get all wrapped up in angels. Uh, there's, there's someone out there. I, I won't, I won't mention the name, but just an author who does a lot of work and sells a lot of books about angels. And I know some of it may be true, but some of it isn't. And it's like, so you, 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 really do need to know your foundation. You really do what the book of Sirach says, um, says without the pupil of the eye, there is no light. That's what lets the light in. And without knowledge, there is no wisdom. So again, if you, if you're, if you don't know what the Bible says, then no matter what someone else says, you, you can be so open-minded, everything falls in and that that's the danger. And if you're not sure, uh, see somebody in, in the clergy or w whatever faith, um, bounce it off of them, what you're hearing, what messages you're getting. Cause you need to be really, really careful because you know, the angel, uh, sometimes the devil can come you know, a angel of light, as it says, uh, I was talking to one woman. It was interesting dealing with it. And I'm with bad mouthing psychics again, but this one medium psychic, whatever it was while she was giving, I don't know, some kind of. She was in, uh, I, I don't even know what, what it was. It was a massage or what it was. I don't even know what was going on, but she also dealt with spirit. And she said, they want to talk to you. And so Michael, the archangel and Mary want to talk to you. So, okay. And the person that I interviewed had a vision and she was taken to the foot of the cross. Okay. Okay. That sounds, that sounds like you're going to Christ. And she's there and she, she said, I could smell the dirt. I could see his feet. Uh, I couldn't look up. I'm not sure why, but I couldn't look up. I don't know if it's shame, guilt. I don't know, but I, I couldn't look up. So she kind of took that with her and uh, this experience she had. Okay. And if, and she, she again is, uh, I'll say ignorant. Ig ignorant isn't stupid. Ig ignorant is just, I don't know. And she goes through and then she suddenly starts reading about the saints and some of the saints experiences. 
in particular, I think one of them had to do with St. Padre Pio, who was a really interesting guy, if you want to, want to read about someone who's had experiences, but died in 1968. But in his case, Jesus appeared to him, and immediately Padre Pio said, out of here, Satan, out of here. And he looked at him. It's the the uh, Jesus, fake Jesus said, how did you know? He says, you don't have the wounds. It's like Satan can appear, but there are certain things that he's not allowed to manifest, including the wounds of Jesus. This has happened to a number of individuals who saw Jesus, but there were no wounds. Be very careful. And so immediately this gal I was interviewing uh, flashed on that experience at the foot of the cross. She said, you know what? No nails. There were no nails. There were no wounds. I, I saw his feet, but I didn't see the nails and, or wounds. There was no sacrifice there. That might not even be Jesus up there. She never really looked up, you know? So again, is it taking you truly to Jesus or not to Jesus in, in something like that? And it can be really difficult. When you look at someone like St. Faustina Kowalska, who lived in, uh, in the 30s, she had a number of experiences. <clears throat> Jesus appeared to her, they, and, they were, and he wanted her to write things down in a book. And she's a saint now, just so you know that the church went, bent over backwards to make sure all this stuff was true and theologically correct. And this was not, this was, a, this was a girl with about, a, I think, a fourth grade education writing these incredible things that Jesus was saying that were theologically correct. But somewhere along the way in the process, Jesus shows up and says, okay, now I want you to throw that book into the fireplace. You throw it in the fire. And she did. It wasn't Jesus. And she, she couldn't tell. I don't know why she couldn't tell. I don't know what she didn't really think about. So when the real Jesus shows up, and keep in mind, God allows God allowed this to happen, maybe for our benefit to understand that we have to be so, so careful when discerning. But they started over again, and that book was written, her diary was written with what he wanted to say through her. You said something that I found very interesting, that when somebody becomes a saint, the church does research to make sure that everything with that individual is factually true. Oh, my gosh. Um they will spend decades, they'll spend hundreds of years making sure they are what they seem to be or were or were they or were they not. It's interesting. There are, there are people, I'm thinking of one in particular, a woman who, uh, uh, Maria de Jesus de Agreda. This, this is a great story, by the way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, she is not a saint, not registered as a saint. There's some, some confusion about some things she wrote, but she's one of the uncorruptibles. Uh, and, and being uncorrupted, incorrupted, however you want to put it, when, when her body, she died in the 1600s, if you exhume today, looks like it did when she, when she was buried in the 1600s. They exhumed her, uh, she was the last time, 19-something, 19, 19 so they, they brought her up. And, still, and it's like, that does have, it doesn't mean that's not the qualifier to be a saint. Right. In her particular case, um, she is still under investigation to see whether or not you know, they want to call her a saint. And they do, they do incredible, they bend, again, bend over backwards because if something down the road says, ah, not so much, they want to be sure. So sometimes they will take a long, 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 long time. And that includes miracles too. That's why it's so, it takes so long to have some miracles verified and approved and all that. And they'll, they'll, they'll give it to atheists because they, they want to make sure whose mouth it's coming out of too, you know. But this Maria de Jesus de Agreda is a great story. She's kind of the original flying nun. Have you heard of saints who can bilocate, Jeff? No, I haven't. Uh, there are some, and Padre Pio could do this too, where they can be in two places at once. Wow. Um, and when she was alive in the 1600s, she was a cloistered nun, meaning she didn't go outside. I mean, she didn't go outside the convent. That's where she was. Well, meanwhile, in what is now Southwest United States of America, where you got friars coming up from Mexico and all that kind of good stuff. Actually, this is the exact same time as the pilgrims. 1600, 1620s, right around there. So think about the 100 pilgrims that got all the attention. We know all about the pilgrims mm -hmm. and Thanksgiving and sitting down and watching football and eating turkey. Okay, right. okay yeah, they got the pilgrims and all that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, down in Southwest United States, there, there were these, uh, what we would call Native Americans, but they weren't Native Americans yet. Well, Indians, they were the Indians. The indigenous people. And the, uh, the Indians would, would, go to the friars and say, we want to be baptized. And they're going, well, who did you even talk to to even understand being baptized and becoming a Christian? Uh, the lady in blue. Hmm. The lady in blue. Who's the lady in blue? 
I don't know, she brings us rosaries, she brings us the cross, and she says, you're baptizing over there. And it's, and it's like, who is this? This nun in Spain is where she was located. Somehow, by located, and they would suddenly see her, and she would bring crosses and rosaries, and she would catechize, she would preach to them, she would teach them about the faith. She would say, the friars are over there, go there, and go over here and be baptized. During the time of the pilgrims, 100 people, 100 people, Christians, mm -hmm. at the very same time. Meanwhile, in the Southwest, that is never spoken about. 60,000 indigenous people became Christians, were baptized because of Maria de Jesus de Agreda. Bishops, priests went from Mexico over to Spain because when they described her and where she, and because she told them where she was, they traveled to her and, mm -hmm. and said, okay, we hear you're over there doing this. Uh, who do you see? What do you know? They wanted, to, again, verification. And she said, well, there's this one-eyed chief, and, and there was, and the, the land, there are these two, there's a tributary, and there's a, and she described perfectly the geography. She described per, per, perfectly the physical nature of some of the people that were being directed to them. She nailed it all. The friars, where they were baptized, what it looked like, what she had done, I mean, to a T. And no one, no one argues it. And again, no one preaches about it. I don't know why, Jeff. I, we don't have to, we don't have to come up with stuff. We just have to tell stories. This to me, again, proof of the power of God, of his divine intervention. He can do anything. God can do anything. Sometime through some incredible saints, individuals who aren't saints for that matter. There's another story you hadn't heard before. Uh -uh. <laughs> do you know how she was like, was she meditating and she would appear over there or was she appear there during yeah, her she, dreams? She was in deep prayer, or? deep prayer, deep prayer. Deep prayer. I don't know if you know, I don't know if you've heard of like ecstasy or rapture is what it's called. That happens sometimes when Mary appears to people where suddenly there's just this, this, this is really fascinating too. I assume it happened at, with the Fatima children. I know it happened mm -hmm. at Garbandal, Spain. It's happened to, it happened in Rwanda. These different appearances Mary uh, has made to children where the children and I'm trying to think, that, and that, that I'm assuming adults too, but generally it's the children. They go into this rapture state where once people realize this isn't happening just once, but over and over again, as they're in this conversation with Mary, scientists, doctors will come and they'll do some different tests on them while they're in this state. And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that this Maria de Jesus de Agreda probably was in the same state, but they, they would take pins and just, Stick them into the into the, into the legs. Nothing. Uh, they would shine brilliant lights into their eyes. They wouldn't squint. Nothing. Like it wasn't even there. Uh, they would try to lift these children. They're small children. They would try, and they couldn't. Uh, it would take two guys laboring to pick up a little girl, and yet, like in Garbandal, Spain, in the sixties. Uh, the girls could lift each other easily you know, to go up to and, and kiss and be kissed by Mary and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but, and again, they're oblivious to the whole world. They are oblivious. And if you look up that, I don't know what you would look up. Um, Cause in Rwanda, this happened in the 1980s to these children. And, and the reason why that is an approved uh, apparition of Mary is that when Mary appeared, she talked about the upcoming slaughter in Rwanda, the Hutus and the Tutsis and all that stuff. And, and how the river would be filled with blood. And, and the children saw it. They saw the hacked up bodies. They saw the blood. And they were horrified by what they saw. And within 10 years, it was a reality in Rwanda. So that's why that's an approved apparition. But in these cases, that, that rapture state takes place. Something is happening there. Do you think there are a lot of miracles within Catholicism like this one that are just not being shared anymore? And if so, why? You ask my question. You ask my question. I, I ask priests that. I say, why don't you guys talk about Eucharistic miracles? Why don't you talk about Guadalupe? Went, well, you know, it's not just the miracle. It's just, I, I said, I understand that. I understand. And not to criticize my church. I love my faith. I love the teachings of, of the church. I do. But this is one I go, are you out of, out, of your, out of your minds? This is like, this is why the early church blew up. This is the dazzle. And the, keep in mind, the miracle is not the thing. The miracle just gets your attention. Then it's up to you to go, what was that? I, I need to understand this. 
uh, biblically, let's try it. Let's try a Bible one just to kind of under, help, help you understand encounter repentance mission. You think about Jesus uh, and the gospel that says that he gets in Peter's boat, says, pull out a little bit. I got to do some preaching here. And then afterwards he says, okay, now go deep, go way out there in deeper water and do some fishing. And he says, I was out there all night. We got nothing. Go out and fish. And he does. And they catch two boatloaders. I mean, they're just unbelievable. And that's the point where Peter realizes who he's dealing with here. And he kneels in front of him and says, run from me. I'm a sinner. That's the repentance part. First you get encounter, you get awakened with the miracle. You realize who somebody is. Then the, then the, the repentance, the I'm sorry part. And then Jesus said, you will be fishers of men. That's the mission part. And with every single one of us and every story in the Bible, me too, with encounter came repentance, came mission. This, you know, in my case, I was sitting in this office and I had just, um, some things were going on in 1999, 2000 and 2000. I got kind of set on a course, if you will, but I'm sitting in this office. I had just, I've been watching a lot of physical miracles happening, how prayer can change the course of somebody's health. I'm sitting in this office and I get this brilliant idea that I think I've created. I haven't, but, uh, the, and I could see better then. And I had this headgear where I could magnify things. So I, I, gra- I grab, I grabbed the Bible. I'm Catholic. So I wasn't reading it. <laughs> That's kind of a joke for Catholic. And, uh, we're, we're doing better now. We're doing better actually. But I grabbed the Bible and I, I got it's 1100 pages. And I said, God, I'm going to flip this open. I'm going to stick my finger in there and whatever it is you're doing with me and why I'm seeing these miracles right now. Cause I'm not getting my miracle. I'm going more blind by the minute. I said, just let me know what you're doing. You know? And I think I'm inventing this. I'm not, you know what this is, Jeff, you ever heard of this? It's called Bible roulette. <laughs> so, you know, it's just boom. And I stick my finger in there and I got Psalm 40. Psalm 40 is my life. There is no Bible verse in the entire Bible that explains my life more than Psalm 40. I cried out to you, God, and you bent over and plucked me out of the muck and put me on firm ground and steadied me and put a new song in my throat for others to hear and be affected by. I'm singing right now. And that's what he had done. He had just, he had plucked me out of this mess I used to be in, put me on firm ground, surrounded me by people who really had just redirected me and awakened me to what the reality really is. And I, uh, and I just started singing this song and I can't stop singing. I've been singing it for 20 years now. I can't stop. And so that, when I realized that God was in this room, <clears throat> that blew me away. I just sat here going, you're in this room. You're talking to me right now, the creator of everything, through whom all things were created. You're in this room right now. How are you in this room right now and why do you care? And then at some point within the next several days, I went, I don't want this to be my only experience with you. And I assumed that I had to change something to have another experience. In other words, if I take a step, you just took a step towards me. Now I need to take a step towards you. And I think if I do that, something else might happen. And I was right. I needed to pick the low lying fruit of change. We had a couple of little, little kids then at the time. And, um, were probably, what were they, maybe six and two or whatever it was at the time. Or maybe a little older than that. Uh, no, I take that back, like 11 and seven. But anyway, I, I, I yelled at them too much. Just stupid yelling, like you do in the house. And just kind of like, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about their feelings. I just, I was stupid yelling, parental, you know, dumb. Discipline is one thing. There's stu- that stupid yelling that we know we do. And I just said, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. And I never did since. I never mm-hmm. did. Uh, I just stopped. I stopped yelling at my kids. And a few months later, something else happened. I was downstairs. I have a, an exercise room. And again, I could see a little better then. And I, you know, you have mirror set up and everything. And so uh, I looked over into the mirror and my head was split open and black smoke was pouring out. And I'm going, whoa. Again, that was kind of like when the light was on in the room. Uh, that was God speaking to me saying, look, look at what's coming out of you. Uh, black smoke. Look at that ego that's coming out of you. Uh, but it's coming out. You're changing. They're saying you're changing. And not only do I see that you're changing there, Trapper, I want you to see that you're changing. And then several months later is when I got the, 
at the time at in the middle of the night where I could I could see in the dark. So there's just been these ongoing experiences that now it's I, I have very little faith, Jeff. I have very little faith. I have a knowing. When you keep experiencing this, I, it's not even faith anymore. You just you just know and you you look for them every day and you find them every day. Um, I had I had a gal. <laughs> it was funny, and I talked about how music music will bubble up and guide me. There was one morning where, why was I waking up to waltzing Matilda? <laughs> waltzing Matilda, waltzing. And I'm thinking, Australia, should I use the term crikey in more sentences? Why am I listening to this Australian song? What's going on? A couple hours later, I got an email from a woman in Australia named Karen. And Karen had a story to tell. And in her story, she was not a Christian when this happened, but it opened the door to becoming one. And what happened was, and it's, it's what we believe is an angel story. She had gotten off a train uh, from work and she was walking home and she's, and she's walked this a million times and this never happened before. It hasn't happened since she's walking down the street and down way down there, you know, she sees three guys on the opposite side of the street, walking towards her, carrying something heavy and something covered by what looks like a bed sheet. So they've got something maybe on some kind of platform or something. She says, is that, is that a, like a big, large, heavy TV. She didn't know what it was. She just sees these three guys on the other side of the walk. And she kind of, as soon as she sees it, kind of, no, yeah, whatever. She's, it's in, it's out of her head. It's kind of the same time because she's walking home. She's got her own daydreams going on. And she hears a voice. And it says, when they drop it, look the other way. Do you hear me? Yeah. And she's now, and she's actually talking out loud to a voice inside. When they drop it, look the other way. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I get what you say. I'm serious. When they drop it, make sure you look the other way. So there's about a two-minute period of time before these two are they're going to be crossing, you know, on the opposite side. And during the entire time, this voice, this angel is, is and after a while, starts having fun with her. Starts singing it. Look the other way. Look the other. I mean, it's this comical, serious angel emphasizing over and over again, look the other way when they, they're going to drop it, look the other way. I got it. I got it. I got it. But she's kind of enjoying this conversation. She's, she said afterwards, she says, I'm surprised. I didn't think I was going nuts. I didn't. I felt so comfortable with whatever this was, whatever he was, whatever. So, so here we, now we're about ready. You know, they're on opposite sides now. Bed sheet over whatever this is. These three guys are you know, okay. And he, and the voice says, okay, okay. It's about to happen. Make sure you look the other way. You're not going to hear from me again. Look the other way. Okay. So she's looking straight ahead. Bam. And every part of her wants to go. Nope. She looks this way. There's like storefronts or something over here. And she looks and cranes. She's craning her neck, looking at something that she knows isn't there. And she's kind of walk. She's still walking forward and looking over here, craning. Oh, I wonder where that came from. And she's still. And then finally, after whatever period of time, she looks forward and continues walking. And then she hears from over here, one of the guys say, no, 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 it's okay, man. She looked the other way. And she looks mm -hmm. over. One of the guys was coming for her, assuming she had seen what was not to be seen, whatever it was that she didn't see. I don't think he was coming to give her a Vegemite sandwich. You know, he was, and he was now turning and going back because the other guy using the exact words of the angel. No, it's okay, man. She looked the other way. So she keeps walking. She thanks the voice. Not there. Not there. There. Not there. Hasn't been there since. That opened up a door for her and her husband, who didn't care, agnostic maybe at best. And uh, it kind of opened up a door to spirituality. And when they were going through some difficulties in the next couple of years, he was the one the farthest away. She, she kind of considered herself spiritual, but whatever, whatever that meant. And he's the one that said, you know, we probably should find a church. And in time both baptized and now contacting me and now fully seeing God's hand in those everyday occasions, some louder than others. We've gone over time already. So I need to switch gears with you and let people know how to find you. Having First, a clue. <laughs> you have a clue. <laughs> I'm kidding. kidding. He's out there somewhere. I'm a, I don't know. Where am I? I don't know. <laughs> So you have a website for your podcast as well as your own personal website. Can you tell us the names of those? Sure. Uh, touchedbyheaven.net is uh, where the podcast 
and that's that's a good first stop if you want to contact me. It's kind of easier because that's where the podcast is. Uh, touchbyheaven.net, there's, uh, what else we do? Well, there's there's a Trapper Jack Speaks uh, for people who want me to come and speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trapper Jack Speaks is a good place to go. There's a little video of, uh, did you see the cork story when you when you went, do you, you went there, right? Is that where you found me, Jeff? Um, I you think, I don't remember which one of them I contacted you. I've looked at your podcast website. I right. barely looked at your other one, and I probably spent the most time maybe on your YouTube channel. Okay. Okay. Which is growing. I mean, that's kind of the, you know, that's a great search engine as you know, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, what is the, what's the name of your, ch- uh, your YouTube channel again? Uh, that's it's touched by heaven. Touched and by then heaven. there's also, yeah, there's trapperjackspeaks.com, but I, I'll, uh, if, uh, there's, there's just kind of this, can I give you a short, cute story? Go for it. Okay. It's your show. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My wife was fixing a salmon salad. I was getting, I was going to get the wine to go with the salad and I go over and I, and I realized the cork is out of the bottle. I wonder how many days has that been there like that? That's weird. A couple of days later, we're coming home and Beth sees on the floor, cork on the floor, same cork from a different bottle of wine. She goes, wait a minute. There's no pressure in wine. What? Two corks? What the heck? Mm-hmm. A couple of days later, son comes home. He's in the movie business. And, and he, we tell him this and he says, you want to know my cork story? I go, yeah, uh, yeah. What's your cork story? He says, he was charged of props. I went out to the trunk to get the two bottles of wine, a bottle of white and a bottle of red have him laying in a pillow. One of the, the, the bottle of white, the cork cracked the seal, com- popped out completely, emptying the contents into the pillow. The bottle of red cracked, again, the cork cracked the seal, came out partially, but not all the way. God's little message there. I don't want you thinking anything bad or messy about this, but basically God had popped four corks in three days. Was he celebrating something? And I realized he was. Beth and I, my wife and I had decided to go and and, and do podcasts, to be a guest, to go into churches, uh, go into churches where we have the greatest need for evangelization because people are heading out and they're not announcing that they're leaving. They're just leaving. They're bored. They don't understand. They're not, there's no relationship. And God was popping corks, if you will. That was the symbolism of all that. And I think that video is on TrapperJackSpeaks.com where I kind of mm. tell that story. But uh, that's but the, the big one I would say, uh, Jeff, would be TouchedByHeaven.net yeah, or, or the YouTube channel, Touched by Heaven. What are you working on right now that you want people to know about besides this stuff? There needs to be a book, Jeff. I mentioned this on Coast to Coast and a a publisher actually got a hold of me and said, you want some help? So I don't know if something's going to happen there or it's going to happen some other way or self-publish or whatever. But there, I keep being told there needs to be, and I've started and stopped so many times, but I seem to be on a a little stronger course that there really should be a a book about this kind of thing. Speaking wherever, um, I've had some inquiries from outside of where I am here in Cleveland so, you know, so there may be something kind of broadening there in the speaking world, because I know that's what's coming. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when you open yourself up to going out there, that means taking it wherever. Zoom is wonderful and all that, but, you know, there's nothing like being in person someplace and uh, speaking about these kinds of things, too. Have you started writing the book? Yeah. Yeah, we've got a few chapters in there. Let's see. Uh, trying to think if there's, yeah, there's, I, I, I could tell you stories forever, but I think you get the idea of what mm-hmm. I do. Yeah, yes. there's, it's just it's going to be filled with these kinds of stories and my own kind of interwoven through as well as as my encounters continue as well. And and anybody watching this, you're having encounters. Maybe you know them. Maybe you're seeing them and, and maybe not. Tell you what, if you go actually, if you go to the touchbyheaven.net and go to, in, to any of the episodes, you can see a link. There'll be a link to a couple of CDs I do or you can do it as a download. One is called Did You Hear What God Just Said? God speaks to us in burning bush. He doesn't usually just sit down and go, let's talk, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Uh, burning bush, you know, uh, life sucks. Life is what you make it. You know, that kind of thing. A song that plays in your head, a birth announcement. That's God speak. This is how, this is how this, he's, he wasn't going to get me through scripture. I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to church and reading scripture. He wasn't going to get me that way. So he uses the whole canvas of his creation to contact us, to be in communication with us. And if there was, and this, did you hear what God just said, CD or download is a great first step to hearing how he's talking to you in your, in your life. So if you wanted to look for something that might be a a good avenue as well. After listening to this podcast, people may want to just reach out to you. Are you open to that? And if so, how can they connect with you? Yeah, probably the Touched by Heaven has a contact page there. That's probably the easiest way. I answer all the emails 
uh, some people, if, if you have a story, I want to, I want to, I want to hear your story. We got to keep this, uh, this going. You're the fuel, you know, the, the, the listeners are the fuel for this whole thing. Right. So, uh, or if there's something else you want to know or question or, you know, anything I can help with, feel free to get a hold of me at touchbyheaven.net. All right. Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Here's my story. Her name is Dawn. And, uh, this may not be your life, but. In Don's case, she, um, young, uh, drank a lot, uh, didn't care that much about God stuff and just living her life. Like we all do. Like, like I did for first, almost 50 years of my life, eh, living a life, whatever. I'm a good person. That's all you need to be. I, I'm a good person kind of thing. And Don was meeting some friends in uh, a restaurant bar and she was sitting there on her bar stool and they're chatting and she hears a voice and, and she's. And the voice says, is this the life you want? And as she's hearing the voice and looking around, she's been given this grace of knowing every weakness of every person in that room. That person's stealing from his company. That person's cheating on his wife. That person, and she just, it's like, it's coming in like this. Is this the life you want? Drinking and with this, and this, and this is your every day. She said, I got to go. She jumped in her car and she drove to her, her church and she sat out in the parking lot and she just cried and Jesus and Mary showed up. Didn't see him, but she felt him. She knew they were there. And if, I don't know if you've had a guest on your show, talk about the illumination of conscience. This is where every sin you've ever committed is shown to you in like flashcards. <laughs> And not only do you know what you did wrong, you, you are shown the ripple effect that when you did this, it affected this person in this way, and they did that, which affect you see the ripple, and it is devastating. It is devastating. And at the same time you're experiencing this, you're also feeling his mercy, his forgiveness. He's, he's putting you through this whole thing, and Mary was holding her saying, you can do this. My son loves you. He's forgiving you. You can do this. You can get through this. And then she sat there for a few hours. The, that, that only lasted a few minutes, but she sat there for hours. She felt that they had never left her. <clears throat> but that was her transition day. And we all can have that transition day without having that huge global you know, illumination of conscience. But uh, we all can have that in our lives. Um, God will take care of the first part of encounter of letting you know he's there. And then the rest, uh, we just have to take a step towards him. And he just keeps moving towards us and life just gets, keeps getting more peaceful and joyful and less worrisome in a world that is filled with worry right now. Uh, very little of it touches me. And I'm very, very grateful for that. And very blessed by that. Well, Trapper, thank you for that message. And thank you again for being my guest today. I really appreciate you and I wish you the best. Thank you so much, Jeff. This has been great. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.